Metro Golden Mayor's popular comedian and the star of the Holy Cigarette Program, Red Skelton. And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I feel great tonight. I saw Bob Hope over in Griffith Park selling benches today. <laughs> I'm proud of that. That ain't in here. <laughs> How are you tonight, Mr. O'Connor? Oh, I'm a little tired from trying to outsmart the first of April pranksters, Red. Uh, tell me, did you get fooled much? Yeah, I started the day off by unwrapping a big package that I was in. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody played another dirty trick. They called up and said the butcher had butter, see? But I didn't go down to the butcher store. What was the dirty trick? He had butter. (laughs) Oh, I would like to thank whoever sent me that pound of butter. I got a pound of butter, you know. Really? Yeah. Somebody sent you a pound of butter? Yeah. Me and the mailman had quite a spread, see? The butter was melted. (laughs) But we didn't let it go to waste, see? We had toast postcards and coffee. Well, speaking of butchers, uh, I see the OPA is up the price of pork and ham. Yeah. You're going to ask for a raise? I'm... (laughs) You can get more money, too. Beef was included in that. (laughs) Bat boy. (laughs) Bat boy, well. (laughs) He's toting enough soap in that pot to clean up the nation. (laughs) Why don't you get out of the meat market and give yourself up, Rod? (laughs) Or didn't you know there was a fatties of short? I mean, a short... (laughs) Stick with it. it. It's there. All you have to do is read it. Yeah, thanks. (laughs) Keep on. We may spare the rod tonight. (laughs) Look. Don't call me no... I'm no ham, you know. Hams can be cured, you know. How are you, Anita? Oh, I read in the April issue of Screenland magazine that you're quite a hunter. Is that true? Oh, I usually find things, yes. <laughs> well, you know, Anita, I'm handy with a gun. How'd you fix me shoot a cigarette out of Skelton's mouth? Whose mouth? <laughs> After me calling you fat boy? Oh, no. <laughs> You'll drop a short round on me, boy. <laughs> Don't be silly. I used to do that act in vaudeville. Yeah, vaudeville's dead, and I ain't going to ask it to move over. <laughs> do you hunt much, Rod? Oh, yes, I do. Oh, I could fall in love with a big, brave hunter. You could, huh? Well, you know, one night I was out and hunting, and I see a big black thing, and I blasted away with it with my old rusty forty-five. Trusty. Rusty. Rusty. I got caught in the California weather. (laughs) Well, anyhow, after I shoot, I throw him a flashlight on it, and it's a big bear. He was dead. No long. Uh, How how long do you figure? Oh, no. Yes, you did it. I hope it's yourself. you like to try it again? There was a big bear. He was dead. No kidding. How long do you figure it had been dead? <laughs> Don't do much good after it no. died. Uh, you're proud of that, aren't you? You have all kinds of fine hunting equipment. Yeah, I have everything but a dog and someone who can read a script. I have a... <laughs> But he was gun shy. I fired the gun over his head, and three days later, he come back and he says, "What's all the shooting for?" <laughs> now, medical science offers you proof positive. Yes, medical science offers you proof positive. No other leading cigarette is safer to smoke because no other gives you less nicotine, less throat-irritating tars than the new, smoother, better-tasting Raleigh. Yes, scientific tests of America's six biggest-selling brands based on a method used by the United States government. Tests certified by a jury of 14 distinguished doctors, including throat specialists, have proved conclusively no other cigarette gives you less nicotine, less throat-irritating tars, so no other is safer to smoke. Yes, Raleigh's are right. Right for taste, right for throat. Enjoy Raleigh's rich tobaccos, that smoother, more satisfying Raleigh flavor. Remember, medical science offers you proof positive. No other cigarette is safer to smoke 
because no other gives you less nicotine, less throat-irritating tars than the new smoother, better-tasting Rawley. And now Frank Ellis's little girl Anita will sing Laughing on the Outside. <laughs> Crowd sees me out dancing, carefree and romancing, happy with my someone new. I'm laughing on the outside, crying on the inside, cause I'm still in love with you. See me night and daytime Having such a gay time They don't know what I go through I'm laughing on the outside Crying on the inside Cause I'm still in love with you No one knows it's just a pose Pretending I'm glad we're apart And when I cry, my eyes are dry The tears are in my heart And I can't we make up Ever since our breakup Make me On the outside, crying on the inside, cause I'm still in love with you. In the Skelton Scrapbook of Satire, we find a story entitled, Some People Just Won't Pay Their Debt. Our characters are fictional. If there's any similarity to persons living, it's not only a coincidence, but an impossibility. <laughs> Chapter 108 is entitled, Where's That Money You Owe Me? If you borrow more money than you can afford to pay back, either you're very stupid or Clem, the fellow from the country. <laughs> Stop eating those bubblegum sandwiches, I guess. <laughs> hey, sir, I'm in the chips now. I just got my paycheck, $20. I owe 50 of it, though. <laughs> Don't leave me very much, you know. <laughs> oh, good heavens, there's Keith McCloud, the guy I owe some money to. <laughs> I'll just pull my ears over my face so he won't recognize me. <laughs> so, I got to run in one of my ears. Oh, going things not a ray on, I guess. I see put too much starch in him. But... Hey, you crab! Uh-oh, he spotted me. I better scoop the footies around the corner here. <laughs> oh, graham crackers, here he comes. <laughs> Just a minute, you. Yeah, howdy doody. I want to talk to you, Cadaddle Hopper. <laughs> Cadiddle Hopper. <laughs> That's what it says on my pedigree papers, isn't it? <laughs> it's like grasshopper, only there's a cadiddle in it. <laughs> What about my money? What money? Look, don't play dumb with me. With me, I ain't playing. <laughs> I'm always this way. What's on your mind, Tiffany? 
I want to know when you're going to pay me that dollar that you owe me. Here, now let go of me now. Let go of my throat. Stop squeezing Adam's apple, will you? Well, I ain't squeezing your Adam's apple hard. Oh, no? Then the hell come over and start making taste cider. <laughs> Money or I'm going to knock your block off. Well, I'm not going to stand for this. Oh, no. I told you I wasn't going to stand for it. (laughs) Good thing I was born numb from the neck up, you know. I'm tired of fooling with you, Clem. I'm coming back in ten minutes, and you better have that money, or I'm going to take it out of your hide. How'd you find out where I kept it? (laughs) I better hurry home. That's what I better do. Sarah, do howdy duty to you, too, Mary. <laughs> oh, Clem, it's good to see you. Ain't it, though? And just look why you're a-wearing shoes. Them ain't shoes. I stepped in some fresh cement this morning. <laughs> well, where did you get that black eye? It just looks awful. Well, it's going to look better soon because I'm going to have a broken neck to match it. <laughs> oh, Clem. Clem, you talk nonsense. And I phrase it well, too. <laughs> Well, come on and tell me what happened. Well, some feller claims he loaned me a dollar, and just because I won't pay him back, he got sore. Why, that's ridiculous. I got a bang out of it myself. <laughs> well, are you going to pay him? If I don't, he's going to look me up and knock my block off. Why, that's awful. Oh, well, now, don't worry. My head's unbreakable, you know. <laughs> oh, Quinn, you're the most stupid man I know. Well, now, that's mighty nice of you. <laughs> I'm glad you appreciate me, Sarah Dew. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh, he's followed me here. Well, well run upstairs and hide, Clem. Okay, oh, too late, too late, he saw me. <clears throat> yeah. All right, it caught you, didn't I? Yeah. I thought you'd pull the old brake. Are you going to pay me? I am not. I'm going to run upstairs and hide, and you can't stop me. <laughs> Let go of my suspenders, will you? <laughs> Remember, medical science offers you proof positive. Remember, medical science offers you proof positive. No other leading cigarette is safer to smoke because no other gives you less nicotine, less throat-irritating tars than the new smoother, better-tasting Raleigh. Hank Greenberg, Detroit Tigers' home run king, says, quote, No hocus-pocus here. I've read the reports. Medical science has proved no other cigarette gives you less nicotine, less throat-irritating tars. Thus, no other is safer to smoke. Knowing the facts, I recommend Raleigh's. Raleigh's are right. Right, Hank Greenberg. And those tests were based on a method used by the United States government. So enjoy Raleigh's rich tobaccos, that more satisfying Raleigh flavor. Remember, medical science offers you proof positive. No other cigarette is safer to smoke because no other gives you less nicotine, less throat irritating tars than the new smoother, better tasting Raleigh. And now David Forrester and his orchestra featuring Don Ferris at the piano will play excerpt from Rachmaninoff's Concerto No. 2, theme of Frank Brzezaghi's Technicolor production, I've Always Loved You.
David Forrester. Chapter 109 of the Skelton Scrapbook is entitled, Run and Hide, the Bill Collector's Coming. <laughs> Collectors are broad-minded. They spare nobody. One sure way of keeping away from your door is to have someone around like Junior, the mean widow Ken. Junior, <laughs> you heard about Jack and the Beanstalk and the goose that laid the golden fortune? Well, I is Junior, the kid with a cat. It's going to cough up a fortune. Come on. Put it out. What on earth are you talking about? Come on. About? Put it out, kitty. Come on. Put Stop it out. Stop that. Spit what out? Money. He's a little witch cat here. I heard Mr. Frank next door tell his wife that they could take a trip because there was $50 in the kitty. <laughs> now, if I can only get him to fit it out, Kitty. Put that cat out before she's crazy. If he scratches me, she'll be elicited in the obituary column nine times. <laughs> oh, look at her. Look at her. Licking her paw with her tongue. Look at her. She's washing herself. Well, do tell. <laughs> I thought maybe she was straightening out her lipstick or something. <laughs> Are you going to put that cat out? All right, all right. I'll put her outside, but she's awful widow. You'll be carrying that much money around, you know, with all the crime that's going on. Hey, Grandma, what are you doing? Sewing. What kind of sewing? I'm doing a whip stitch on the seat of your pants. Always practicing, huh? <laughs> Junior, what am I going to do with you? Running out of ideas, eh, kiddo? <laughs> hey, where's me slingshot, huh? Are you planning something bad? Well, you might think it's bad, but if I ain't slipping, I think it's pretty good, myself. <laughs> oh, there's me slingshot. She hit it on the table there. I'll reach up and... Junior, what did you break? You know that vase with Whistler's mother on it? Yes. The old girl just had a nervous breakdown. Well, pick up what's left of the vase and throw it in the trash can. Yeah. Ain't you going to whip me? Ain't you going to knock me with your head off like you usually do? No, No, Junior. You were truthful. But if you don't whip me, I might do something really bad. (laughs) Now, Junior. No, Junior. Don't cry. You just don't want to bother with me no more. You want me to grow up and steal automobiles and stuff? You just don't love me, that's all. Oh, you just oh. I don't want to be known to make no better, that's all. That sweet, bless his little heart. You bless his little heart. Well, if you insist. No, not so hard. Goodness, I met you halfway. Be a sport, kiddo. <laughs> If you don't watch your talk, I'm going to wash your mouth out of soap. Well, don't overdo it like the last time. I was blowing bubbles for two days around. <laughs> Who's that? Somebody coming. I wonder who that could be. I don't know. Oh, it's what? the first of the month. It's the bill collector. Bill collector? Yes. Hasn't you finished paying for me yet? <laughs> if he hadn't, he still wouldn't take you back. Yes. Grandma, the jig is up. We is trapped like rats. Nail down the furniture. Lock the doors. Quick, hide down in the cellar. Oh, stop acting silly. Hey, he's been out trying to get money from us before. Look, he's got a baseball bat and a blowtorch. Look. <laughs> hmm? Now, now, keep quiet. Okay. Maybe he'll go away. Yeah. Keep away from the no, window. No, don't hit me. Commando tactics, huh? I'll infiltrate under the table here. Be careful, Junior. That lamp. You must... <laughs> Save your breath, kiddo. I knew what you was going to say anyway. I hear you in there. I heard you knock something over. Open this door. I'm a bill collector. I'm from the Ever Friendly Credit Company. What's he doing? He sounds very friendly to me. No, you, kiddo? no, he doesn't. Boy. What's he doing, Junior? Wait, I'll look through the keyhole and see. What do you see? I can't see anything. His eye is in the way. <laughs> I'm proud of that. <laughs> oh, oh, look, there's that nutty man that lives next door there. That old Don Boomhauer. Look at him. He just came out. Look. Good morning. Good morning. It's a little light to be looking in windows, isn't it? I'm looking for the people who live here. <laughs> well, in that case, you've come to the right place. <laughs> hey, 
I'm going to sneak upstairs and where I can get a better view. Because you're going up the steps to make better time, I'm going to slide up the banister. <laughs> a little trick I learned watching newsreels. <laughs> pretty sneaky. They're always hiding from me. Well, try again. Maybe they'll answer. I saw the kid outside a while ago playing with a bear trap. Yes. I'm going to peep out and see what's... Oh, there he is right beneath the window. <laughs> now he ought to know better than that. <laughs> oh, boy, what a spot for a bag of water. <laughs> boy, shall I? Shall I? <laughs> me good self says uh, no, but me bad self says yes. Yes, no, yes, no, 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 yes. Well, look at that. <laughs> While me good self was jabbering away, me bad self filled up a bag. <laughs> well, I is going to do it. Here it goes. Way to go. <laughs> it's clouding up. Yeah. <laughs> Coming down in bags full. You know. Junior! Yes. Oh, there you are. What are they doing now? The bill collector is walking around the side of the house. Oh, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. What are you so happy about? He's walking into my landmines. <laughs> oh, boy, I can hardly wait. You wait for what? Oh, my word, my word! Does that answer your question, kiddo? <laughs> Well, he just found out how a bear trap works. <laughs> he really put, he put old Paul Nett in here. <laughs> Junior, where did you get that bear trap? It's the one you threw away after you caught Grandpa. <laughs> hey, why don't that man go away? Because he's off to the radio. Yeah? What does he want with a radio that don't work? Since when doesn't it work? Since you left me alone in the house this morning. <laughs> Yeah. I'm going to spank you. You, you can't. The man's still down there. Oh, You'll that's hear right. Yeah, that's a pretty good thing. I wish he'd stay around a couple of weeks. <laughs> Give the sheet of me pants time to cool off. Uh -oh. oh, he's sneaking in the back door. We're lost. Good afternoon. Quite a fortress you've got here. <laughs> we are now, we like it, we guys. I want to apologize. I, I, I'm ashamed of the way we treated you. Well, you should be. I think we've got a kick coming. Oh, yes, and you're going to get it, too. Oh, oh, he's uh, kicked my shin. Junior, stop kicking the man. You've got your good shoes on. Yeah. <laughs> Aren't you ashamed of yourself? What? Aren't you ashamed of yourself? I certainly is. He's still standing up. I'm taking this radio right now unless you care to pay the sum of $100. I don't have that. Hold it up, Joe. Yeah, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Don't end it so rough. I got some bananas hidden there. Easy does it going down the steps, Joe. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and eat a banana on the steps. <laughs> Way ahead of me, I guess. <laughs> Wouldn't it be awful if they accidentally stepped on a banana peel? <laughs> I wonder if I laid a banana peel here, they would step on it. Or maybe they would step over it. And then again, I don't know why I'm sitting here with my tongue hanging out. I'm going to do it anyhow. <laughs> I just laid it down here real easy, and maybe they won't see it now. <laughs> Look out now. Here's the first step, Joe. Surprised you, didn't I? <laughs> well, here we are at the bottom. Easy now. <laughs> that was me delayed action banana peel. <laughs> Red Skelton saying goodbye now and thanks for listening and remember...